this video is going to cover the question, how banks create money. So we're going to try to explain this here. And first off to uh, understand is that banks do not have a printing press. So they are not literally uh, you know, printing out uh, dollar bills or, 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 or making money, making cash in that fashion. But in the normal course of their business operations, they will do something that will increase the money supply. How do we make sense of this? Well, first off, we have what's known as a fractional reserve banking system. Banks take in deposits, as we talked about back in, in, in chapter nine, uh, in, in the market for loanable, uh, chapters nine and 10, market, banks operate in the market for loanable funds. They take in deposits from uh, deposit people, households or businesses that have money that they aren't uh, ready to spend yet, and they put it in their bank accounts. And then banks take those, that money that their customers put in their accounts and they lend it out. If you had no, and that's called fractional reserve banking. So what the banks will do is they will keep a fraction of that money as reserves and then they will lend the rest out. They lend the rest out, well, first off, because that allows them to make loans to you know, people who want to start businesses or, or, or house uh, people who want, uh, couples that want to buy a house so they get a mortgage loan or buy a car and get a car loan. And, and by charging interest on, on those loans, banks can make some money and that allows them to pay interest and, and uh, pay interest on customers' deposits and then also uh, earn some profit for themselves because banks uh, try to make money. So if we had, if we didn't have this, if you had a 100% reserve banking system, then banks wouldn't lend out any of the deposits that they take in and they wouldn't be able to create money. So it's just what we mean is that the uh, operation of the fractional reserve banking system, when banks uh, keep only a portion of the money that uh, comes in and deposits as reserves, this, this leads to money creation. The important thing to keep in mind as to why this happens is that the money supply and uh, the most basic measure of the money supply is something called M1. And if you look in chapter 17, it'll talk about how M1 involves currency because obviously at one level, if we want to know how much money there is in the United States, the number of dollar bills or the total value of dollar bills in circulation out there in the economy would be one part of it. But then we also include checkable deposits, bank, uh, deposits in checking accounts and in banks that people could write uh, checks on. Because if you think of what's happening there, if somebody has a, a checking account, they've taken some cash and they've taken it to the bank, or maybe it's an electronic funds, but the thing is the old fashioned way, if somebody goes to the bank with some cash, they put the money, they, they give the money to the bank, they get it credited in their account. And so they have effectively, cash in that account. And then you write a check sort of saying like, okay, take some of this money out of my account and give it to whoever you write the check to. So there's money in there and, and money gets uh, transferred from one account to another. But since people, since one of the, the core functions of money is uh, as a medium of exchange, when people are using checks to purchase goods and services, they're really, that that's functioning as money. So we include checkable deposits in the money supply. And that's important because what bank, fractional reserve banking are gonna increase the amount of checkable deposits. Now we have a numerical example here and to do this numerical example, we have to have a reserve ratio. The reserve ratio simply refers to what percentage of the deposits that come into the uh, bank that the bank is gonna keep as reserves. In other words, not lend out. And those reserves, uh, some portion of them will be kept in the, uh, the vault in the bank, but most of them will be kept on reserve at the Federal Reserve. And chapter 17 talks about what the Federal Reserve is. We won't uh, get into that in, in this video. So we're gonna go through a hypothetical example here of supposing that $10,000 comes in, into uh, the bank and they have the bank's, uh, um, they have the, the bank's accounting uh, ledgers in the book that go through a number of examples of this. We don't go, have to go into a lot of detail of that because this isn't an accounting class. Those of you who are business uh, students, if you haven't already, at some point you'll learn all about the, the great uh, double entry banking with uh, the, probably with Professor Grice. So we'll leave, you, leave, that, uh, uh, leave Professor Grice to go into more detail about what this means. But basically, uh, Banks are going to have assets, the things that they own, and then the liabilities are, are things that they 
uh, owed to people. So we're going to think about what happens when somebody comes in and deposits $10,000 new into the banking system into a checking account. Well, that checking account deposit would get entered here as a, a liability for the, the bank. It's a liability for the bank because they have the money, but it belongs to somebody else. And then per, whoever put the $10,000 in here could come and say like, hey, I want my money back. And so they would have to be able to, to give that money back. And so that's why it's coming as a liability. But the bank here would get $10,000 in assets. And we'll call that, initially we'll say those, those would be reserves. Now, because the bank uh, it is fractional it operates with fractional reserve banking when it gets in the excerpt this money here it will want to turn around and try to make a loan so suppose they uh, again and just so we have some numbers to make this work out here the bank's saying that they want to keep 10 percent of all, all the the money that come in as uh, uh that comes in and deposits as reserves so they right now have ten uh ten thousand dollars in reserves but they don't have any loans out so they want to get some loans out so they're going to take some of this money and, and just again, so we have a numerical example here, they're going to take $9,000 of this money because they want to keep 10% or $1,000 as reserves. They're going to take $9,000 of this and they're going to make a, a loan to somebody. So what this will do is they'll not only have $1,000 as reserves, but now they will have a loan. And we'll put the $9,000 here. They make a loan maybe to somebody who's uh, getting ready to start a business. So, so they're starting a business. They've taken out a loan here for $9,000. Um, and, well, when you get a business loan, the first thing that you're likely to do is, well, you're, you're, start, you're, you're starting a business, so you'll start a bank account for that bank for that business. And you'll put that $9,000 into a bank account. So when the person who, who gets the loan to start the business, then you know goes ahead and sets up their bank account, they get $9,000 and they'll probably set up a checking account. And it may well be at a different bank. So it may be at this bank, maybe at a different bank. Um, it doesn't really matter for our purposes here. And I just put a dot here just saying that this is going to be a, sa a second transaction. In $9,000 in a, a checking here. And then whatever bank they, uh, this, uh, the, the person who started in the business deposits their money in, get $9,000 in reserves. And again, this may be at a different bank. So let's stop and see what happens here. We started with $10,000. It came in as a deposit to the bank. They went and, and, and since a, a deposit is a, a deposit in the checking account and it shows up here. The bank then makes a loan and that the $9,000 loan shows up in somebody else's checking account. It, we now have $19,000 in checking accounts. The money supply is currency plus checkable deposits. We were talking about $10,000 here, and yet suddenly now we have $19,000. Money has appeared, money has been created. And it's being created here simply because again, we talk about checkable deposits as part of the money and with fractional reserve banking, when money comes into the banking system and then the banks go ahead and make loans, that will have the effect of increasing the money supply. Uh, now, in, in the, the book, they go through how there's actually then a whole bunch of, there can be subsequent loan, rounds of loans that are coming out of this. And I remember there, there's one con concern in that if some of this money goes into a savings account and then that's not part of M1. There are a bunch of uh, additional things beyond that, but here's a case and, and, and this is for our purposes, this is why I want you to focus on, understand here what happened. $10,000 comes into a bank. That $10,000 is sort of already out there. 
in, in, in the, the system. And we end up with $19,000. In fact, if you go on and have another loan from here, you have more, more than that. But this first step here shows us that we end up with $19,000 and we started with $10,000. Money was created. And this wasn't um, through a bank running a printing press. They're not counterfeiting. They're conducting normal, legal, ethical, uh, uh, fractional reserve banking uh, actions. And But the way that we count the money supply, money will have been created here. So uh, banks end up creating money in this fashion. And this is going to be important to understand how changing the money supply, which is going to be the action of monetary policy, uh, uh, you know, how the, uh, the Federal Reserve can try to change the money supply. Now, the point to notice here, to, to take away from this, is what you have to do is have, because the first thing here, I had $10,000 in reserves. You have to have new reserves coming into the banking system. When new reserves come into the banking system, then banks can make loans. And when they start to make loans, that's what gives us the second round here and the, the increase in the money supply. What the Federal Reserve, when, we did it, when they go through in the rest of the chapter 17, is how the Federal Reserve can, in effect, inject re reserves into the banking system, increase the reserves of the banking system, and when they do that, that will increase the money supply. On the other hand, when the Federal Reserve takes reserve takes reserves out of the banking system, then they uh, banks will have to make fewer loans, and that will reduce the money supply. So that's how the, the Federal Reserve would have some ability to try to control the money supply. Now. Uh, getting into what we're going to do with the money supply and, and other things like that uh, is beyond this video. But here we just wanted to focus in on, on this idea of how it is that banks create money, because that's an important uh, part of understanding everything else we're going to talk about with the monetary policy. So there you go. Banks can create money.